guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a review on the Juvia's Place Warrior Palette. I am super excited to be bringing you this review so I can move on to the next palette because, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm so behind. But I wanted to make a review on this and I have a few Juvia's Place palettes that I've skipped on, which I'm really bummed about, but I just don't have time, guys. So here is my Juvia's Place collection. I just wanted to show you guys that I have all of their palettes and yeah, it is exciting times here at Karen Harris Makeup on my channel. So I did make some notes, let me go ahead and pull them up so I can talk to you guys about some of the things that we need to know about this palette. So of course, like I said, Juvia's Place Warrior Palette. I will link it down below in case you guys are interested in shopping the brand. And I would say this is definitely in the affordable indie category. Juvia's Place is a black owned makeup brand as well. So if you are of a deeper complexion, these shadows are designed to stand out better on your deeper skin tone. Now I feel like I'm definitely rocking a tan right now. I've been outside gardening and enjoying our patio and so yeah, just enjoying the sunshine that is very rare here in Fargo and so I feel like I look so dark but it's okay, I'm not complaining, I love it. So anyway, I've shopped from them many many times as you can see. I have a bunch of their palettes and I found them on their website. Now this did launch pre-sale on May 9th and I actually picked it up. I missed it when it pre-sailed I think because I was like nope, not gonna buy it literally have a million of these palettes but I did end up cracking and uh, purchasing this. I'm not sure if it's limited edition. I don't think any of Juvia's Place palettes have gone away from production yet. I feel like you can buy all of their palettes still but I don't know if they're planning on. I heard rumors that they're going to discontinue this. That's what everyone's been saying. This is their original palette. This is called the Nubian palette. I honestly feel like this is my least favorite Juvia's Place palette. So I don't think anyone is going to miss out on this if they do stop selling it. I feel like this is going to eventually find its way onto my Poshmark. I'm just trying to like come to terms on the fact that I don't use it and it deserves a better home. And yeah, I just, it it's just not my favorite palette. But I have the collection so I kind of want to keep it complete. What do you guys think? Do I just get rid of it because I'm not using it? So I don't know yet. So anyway... Product costs $21, shipping is $4, 4 to $5 is what I typically found. Now you can get 10% off by using code. I just use Trend Mood because that's where I go to for all my makeup updates and it's just easy for me to just use her code. Now as far as packaging, I am obsessed. Like I've said before, I think in the swatch video, these palettes remind me so much of the movie Black Panther. I love like the African inspired drawings and the makeup and there's just a little bit of culture in here that I particularly enjoy. Now obviously I'm not African so I can't tell you that it's like authentic and this is what everyone in Africa wears um, but there is just something so wonderful about their celebrating that particular culture so I do think it's beautiful and I like putting them on display. I think it's very unique so yeah that's my take on that. This palette was made in the People's Republic of China. It was designed and formulated in the USA. Now, from what I understand, I haven't done any research on this, but Jen loves her reviews. Did explain this in a recent video as well. She said, just because something is made in China doesn't mean that it isn't cruelty free. It is only considered a animal tested product if the product is sold in China because that is a requirement of the Chinese government that if you are going to sell in the Chinese market your product needs to be tested on animals but if it is just produced in China and then shipped back to the United States then it can still be cruelty free because the product does not require animal testing to be sold in the United States. So. Just want to put that out there. I don't know if they claim that this is... Oh yeah, it does say... First line on here is cruelty-free product. So that's how it is able to be cruelty-free. It's not sold in China. So it is a cruelty-free product. So the eyeshadow palette contains net weight of 32.4 grams or 1.14 ounces and has a 12-month shelf life in case you guys were wondering. As far as shade selection and finishes in this palette, there are two 
mattes, or sorry, there are three matte shades right here. So this is like the perfect eyeshadow palette for somebody that just wants one eyeshadow palette, one palette to go to on a daily basis. So you put this in your crease, this to darken up your out of V, this on your brow bone, and then you just, one of these shades can be your lid shade. For that particular purpose, I do think this palette will serve anybody really well. It is a big departure from Juvia's Place aesthetic. Apart from the very first palette, none of their palettes have been, you know, just like these neutral palettes, which is why I didn't want to buy it. But then everyone's like, well, no, this makes perfect sense for Juvia's Place um, as far as their product because, you know, they don't have anything like it. And people that want to try out their products but are afraid of color don't want to buy their products because it's too bright and colorful, which I totally understand. The only thing for me, though, is now that I've played with this palette, is I feel like the reason Juvia's Place stands out is because they do those vibrant colors. So if they made 500 of these palettes, like, if all of these palettes that I own from them were neutral palettes, I don't think I would support the brand because at some point it's like, okay, it's like 50,000 shades of beige. Like, I can't do this anymore. And I also realized I have a lot of neutral palettes in my collection that I already really love. Now, this is a bad example for a neutral palette, but I feel like this is the perfect neutral palette for, like, what's in now. So the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette is gorgeous. I love the shade selection in this because you can do neutral, but you can also add some berry tones and pinks, which are so in right now. This is also a black-owned brand, and you get more shades in this palette, which I think is cool. And I love the packaging of this as well, and this palette's been around for a long time. Another go-to neutral palette of mine is the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette. I have told you guys so many times about how much I love this palette. I love the size. I love that you get a lot of options. I like that there's a black in here because that does come in handy. And I use this palette when I travel for work because it's neutral, it has everything I need, and yeah, it's a very versatile palette. Plus, if I break it, I am not going to lose any sleep over it. A soft Glam Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Now, this is going to be one of my next reviews on my channel, and I love this palette, you guys. It is the perfect palette for every day. Again, I love this formula. It is the Anastasia formula that we know and love. I love the shade Dusty Rose. It's a beautiful mauve shade. Um, there are some rosy colors in here as well. So it's kind of like the Colored Rain palette. There's a little bit of neutral, but there's also a few fun things in there so you can really mix it up. This one is a little bit limited because all you're going to get is those neutral sh shades, which is totally fine because this palette is also more affordable than those ones. But I just wanted to compare them to stuff in my collection in case you have some of these palettes already and you're wondering, like, should I get the Juvia's Place palette? I would say, honestly, you're fine with the ones you have. Hopefully that helps you guys out as well. Now, I did have a really, like, not too hard of a time using these. These shades foil beautifully. The brown is a little bit difficult to blend. Um, you do have to build up the pigmentation. It does get a little bit patchy, uh, but nothing, like, too horrible at all. These shadows are gorgeous. I mean, the shimmer shades from Juvia's Place, you can't go wrong. They are so pigmented and buttery. And, oh, that last shade, I didn't really swatch, but... Yeah, they're just beautiful. I love their shadows. So overall, if you are wondering, should you pick up this palette? I would say if you are a collector of Julius Place palettes like I am, if you hesitated on the first round, if you do get a chance, I think this palette has a place in your collection. Do I think, you know, it's like the end-all, be-all of neutral palettes? Of course not. Even in their colorful palettes, Juvia's Place always does include a few neutrals, and I think that's a good thing. It's a safe bet because it's a great way to segue into color. Like this palette, Masquerade palette, this two rows are all neutrals. So I feel like it's not really something some brand brand new that Juvia's did with the neutral shades, but I think it's nice because if you didn't want these colors, now you have your go-to neutral palette. So, yeah, I applaud them for, you know, trying to cater to everyone. I think that is important. I'm glad I picked this palette up, but if I was on a budget or if I wasn't on YouTube, I probably would try to restrain myself from buying that palette because I have so many neutral palettes. Okay, guys, that is everything for my Juvia's Place 
Warrior Palette review. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for spending time with me, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.